Welcome back to our course, the Fundamentals of Operating Systems, based on the textbook Operating System Concepts, 10th edition, by Silbershots, Gagney, and Galvin, published by Wiley Publishing. In the last lesson, we were discussing page allocation. Let's pick up where we left off. Another important factor in the way frames are allocated to the various processes is page replacement. With multiple processes competing for frames, we can classify page replacement algorithms into two broad categories, global replacement and local replacement. Global replacement allows a process to select a replacement frame from a set of all frames even if that frame is currently allocated to some other process. In other words, one process can take a frame from another process. Local replacement requires that each process select only from its own set of allocated frames. For example, consider an allocation scheme where we allow high priority processes to select frames from low priority processes for replacement. A process can select a replacement from among its own frames or the frames of any lower priority process. This approach allows a high priority process to increase its frame allocation at the expense of a low priority process. Whereas with local replacement strategy, the number of frames allocated to a process does not change. With global replacement, a process may select frames allocated to other processes, increasing the number of frames allocated to itself. One problem with global replacement algorithms is that the set of pages in memory for a process depends not only on the paging behavior of that process, but also on the paging behavior of other processes. Therefore, the same process may perform quite differently because of totally, for example, it might take 0.5 seconds to, for one execution and 4.3 seconds for the next execution. This is not the case with a local replacement algorithm. Under local replacement, the set of pages in memory for a process is affected by the behavior of only that process. Local replacement might hinder a process, however, by not making less used pages of memory available to it. So, global replacement generally results in greater system throughput. It is therefore the most commonly used method. One possible strategy that we can use to implement a global page replacement policy will satisfy all memory requests from the free frame list. Rather than waiting for the list to drop to zero before we begin selecting pages for replacement, we trigger page replacement when the list falls below a certain threshold. This strategy attempts to ensure that there is always sufficient free memory to satisfy new requests. Such a strategy is shown on the right up here. When the threshold drops below this threshold, a kernel routine is triggered that begins reclaiming pages from all processes in the system. Of course, the pages used by the kernel itself are exempted from this reclamation. Such kernel routines are often known as reapers, and they may be applied to any page replacement algorithm that we've talked about so far. When the amount of free memory reaches the maximum threshold, right here, the Reaper routine is suspended, only to resume once free memory again drops below this minimum threshold. In this figure, we see that at point A here, the amount of free memory drops below the minimum threshold, and the kernel begins reclaiming pages and adding them to the free frame list. It continues until the maximum threshold is reached up here at B. Over time, there are additional requests for memory, and at point C, the amount of free memory again falls below the minimum threshold. Page reclamation resumes, only to be suspended when the amount of free memory reaches the maximum threshold at point D. The process continues as long as the system is running. As mentioned earlier, the kernel routine may adopt any page replacement algorithm, but typically uses some form of least recently used approximation. 
Consider what may happen, though, if the Reaper routine is unable to maintain the list of free frames above that minimum threshold. Under these circumstances, the Reaper routine may begin to reclaim pages more aggressively. For example, perhaps it will suspend the second chance algorithm and use pure first in, first out. Another, more extreme example occurs in Linux. When the amount of free memory falls to a very low levels, a routine called the out of memory killer selects a process to terminate free in its memory. How does Linux determine which process to terminate? Each process has what is known as an out of memory score, with a higher score increasing the likelihood that the process might be terminated by the out of memory killer routine. Out of memory scores are calculated according to the percentage of memory a process is using. The higher the percentage, the higher the out of memory score. In general, not only can Reaper routines vary how aggressively they reclaim memory, but the values of the minimum and maximum thresholds can be varied as well. These values can be set to default values, but some systems may allow a system administrator to configure them based on the amount of physical memory in the system. So far in our coverage of virtual memory, we have assumed that all main memory is created equal, or at least that it's accessed equally. On non-uniform memory access systems, NUMA systems, with multiple CPUs, like those we talked about earlier, that's not the case. On these systems, a given CPU can access some section of memory faster than it can access others. These performance differences are caused by how CPUs and memory are interconnected in the system. Such a system is made up of multiple CPUs, each with its own local memory like you can see on the right. The CPUs are organized using a shared system interconnect, and as you might expect, a CPU can access its local memory faster than memory local to another CPU. NUMA systems are, without exception, slower than systems in which all memory accesses are treated equally. However, NUMA systems can accommodate more CPUs and therefore achieve greater levels of throughput and parallelism. Managing which page frames are stored at which locations can significantly affect performance in NUMA systems. If we treat memory as uniform in such a system, CPUs may wait significantly longer for memory access than if we modify memory allocation routines to take NUMA into account. Their goal is to have memory frames allocated as close as possible to the CPU on which the process is running. The definition of close is with minimum latency, which usually means on the same system board as the CPU. So, when a process incurs a page fault, a NUMA-aware virtual memory system will allocate that process a frame as close as possible to the CPU on which the process is running. To take NUMA into account, the scheduler must track the last CPU on which that process ran. If the scheduler tries to schedule each process onto its previous CPU, the virtual memory system tries to allocate frames for the process close to the CPU on which it is being scheduled. Then improved cache hits and decreased memory access times will result. We're about to get into a discussion of thrashing, which you're going to find more about very soon. But this is a good place for us to take a break. Look over your notes, update your study guide, and when you are ready, come on back and we'll begin our discussion of the problem of thrashing.